team recently. I want to thank the leadership of the Agde Kenry and uh, Vika here, Canon. I want to appreciate God's grace among you and what he's doing uh, through your ministry. May the Lord Almighty perfect all that concerns you and your ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will share a word of prayer together. Lord Almighty, thank you for the opportunity for us to meet again. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for the encouragement that we have received. Lord, we say be magnified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jehovah, as we share together again from the word of the Lord, we pray you grant us revelational understanding in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. I want to thank God today being the last Sunday in the month of September and the series that we've been considering and uh, talking about the glorious church in this throne room experience. I was privileged to join us in one of the Sundays um, when our Reverend Father is ministering all the way from uh, Nigeria too. And it's a blessed time. And I want to trust the Lord as we are closing this series little by little. He will also grant us better understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, we have read the text that is meant for this series. Um, but I would like to read verse 26 and 27 again, which will be the area where I will be bringing uh, my topic of discussion as the Lord has laid upon my spirit. And verse 26 says that he might, that's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. It said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the wall, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That it should be holy and without blemish. And as the Lord is laying upon my spirit to share from this passage of the scripture, it, it is an in-depth word that will take us a lot of time to get to the revelation behind what God is saying through this verse of the scripture. It applies to so many aspects of our life, and um, I just trust the Holy Spirit to minister life as he has desired, even to us in this meeting. So today, by the grace of God, I'll be talking to us on what I tied to the loved church, the loved church. And when you are talking about the loved church, from the context of the verses that I've read uh, for us, the scripture says that it might sanctify claims wash and the light that he might present it to a glorious church having wrinkle and the host of that now that is the ultimate intention of christ and i like our teams talking about the glorious church and that that is our inheritance in christ that is our destiny in christ so the lord impressed upon my spirit to share about a loved church and this love church, the understanding got to my spirit as a result of what Paul said in preceding verses to that verse 26 I read. And that was when he says that the husband should love his wife as the Christ loved the church. Husband to love your wife in verse 25, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What is the import of Christ loving the church? What's the import of the instruction that is being given to the husband here to love his own wife the way Christ loved the church? And that is why we need to understand what it is to bring that institution to function and then understand what the church is to our Christ and what we are to him and what he is to us. And so I'm talking about a loved child. And I want to tell you that we are loved. We are loved. We are loved. And that is why 
we have this privilege to be here today. Just like uh, some of our in song that, that says that, uh, you know, any come back to fair on me, I will fair me. If fair duty a color, I will fair me. Go right here. All come see that is the context of the love church i'm saying and what makes the church to be loved what is the 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 the, the elements of this love that is also implied to marriage I just finished a conference on marriage recently, so don't mind me if I'm talking a little about marriage within the context of the time I have. And the, 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 the illustration that was given us in that place talks about marriage. So we, we might delve into things that, that, that looks like that. Now, what is the pathway, the element to becoming a love church? What is the pathway that we got ourselves, find ourselves in this situation to become a love church? What is it that Christ is demanding of us, or Paul is expansiating for us, man and wife, to understand in the context of the love of Christ to the church? And these are things that is going to come out from this teaching, the love church. The love church is a glorious church. The love church is our destiny in Christ. The love church is that where we are and the privilege that we have in Christ. Number one thing that is an, a very strong element in this story, in this revelation and understanding that God is given us is the fact that a love church or the love church is a church that was sacrificed for. The first important element here is sacrifice. Sacrifice in the sense that the scripture says in that verse 25 that we have, he said, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The church that is loved is a priceless church because it came by the sacrifice of Christ. And anything that you do or that come out of commitment of sacrifice, you treasure it. You see, the, 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 the Yoruba proverb says, sorry if I'm speaking Yoruba a little, that owote yoruba fowoshe enyamulowa Meaning that what you don't put commitment in terms of your finances, you don't put commitment in terms of your resources into, you don't appreciate the value, you just keep it somewhere. But this is not the case of this glorious church that we are talking about, which is also the loved church. The loved church is a product of sacrifice. And that's why I also tell married and marriages that marriage that is working can only work as a product of sacrifice. So for us, man, that has been told to love his wife, you can do that because you can bring your marriage to that joyful stand by sacrifice. The scripture said Christ gave himself for it. So the church is not just something that came casually. It's not just something that just came uh, anyhow. No, it is not just the formation of the knowledge or the wisdom of somebody that wants to do something. No, but it came by the reason of the ultimate sacrifice. And that's why I tell you that you need to appreciate the importance of this sacrifice as a love church. And when you are talking about church, you are talking about this story we are talking about. We are talking about us. The church is not the world. The church is not the name. It's not Anglican, it's not Methodist, it's not deep life, it's not um, whatever denomination. That is not the church. The church is the entity of the people that Christ sacrificed for. The sacrifice of Christ makes a church. The sacrifice of Christ makes a body. So the making of our love church is by the sacrifice of Christ. And I tell you, that is an important element that operates even in the operation of the church. And that is why if you are in the church, if you are part of the body of Christ, you cannot live a life of sacrifice. Then you are not belonging to us. You are not part of us. 
You are not likely to be able to share from the benefit of that church that is loved, of that church that Christ gave himself for. That church is a product of sacrifice. And thereby, that church operates and runs by sacrifice. And that is why you see a lot of people, you know, they, 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 they are doing everything to even give their life, just like Christ did. You go and see missionaries. They are living in places that is on earth for to preach Christ, and they are sacrificing. In fact, some of them, we have opportunity to run away or to leave that place. They will serve in communist nations. They will serve in nations where they are banned. I was listening to a commentary on, on how some people smoke good Bible to the, 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 the former Soviet Union. I was like, wow, how can people sacrifice their life this way? They, they risk everything. And if they are caught, the next thing is death. And they are aware of that and they are prepared for that. Church runs on the wheel of sacrifice. The fuel that keeps the church going was the same fuel that brought the church, and that was sacrifice. And so I said to the church of God, listening to me, I said to the church of God, the body of Christ that are listening, you are loved. If you are behind somebody, your wife, your uncle, your friend, say to the person, if you are part of the body, you are loved. If you are part of the body, though, I say, you are loved. And that is it. So if you are loved, and this love came as a result of sacrifice, then you have to also sacrifice. Remember that song? Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has been so long to you. Behold what manner of love the Father has been so long to you. That you should be called the sons of God. That you be called the sons of God. So if you don't understand that love yet, it is something deep. I will talk about that short. It is something serious. It is a love that comes by sacrifice. And that is our destiny in Christ. Number two element that is very strong. And married, married, don't forget. I mentioned it. Sacrifice makes your home to run well. Sacrifice. And importantly to you, husband, he said, love your wife. As Christ love. I will you remove that word, love. I will say, as Christ sacrifice. As Christ sacrifice. For the church, so sacrifice also for your wife. The important second element in the making of this church, in the consummation of that marriage between Christ and his church, is submission. Is submission. I was speaking yesterday about the word submission in, in our conference, that the submission that Christ, or the word of the Lord, explained to Paul in this place, when he says, submit one to another, is talking about mutual respect. And that's supposed to be operational in the body of Christ. That's supposed to be operational in the church. These are the elements that make the church to run well. If we don't respect each other, if we are not mutual in our respect, the laity, the ministerial, and whatever categorization you may have placed in the church, what makes the church to be glorious, what makes that church to run well, is the element of submission in mutual respect for each other. And then going ahead, he says, then why submit to your husband? And that is a leadership structure. I was also saying yesterday about the protocol, the divine protocol of communication in marriage. When Adam and Eve fell and they made mistakes, God, when he came into the garden, he did not talk to, did, did God not know that it was Eve that did what she did? He didn't talk to Eve. He went straight for Adam and said, Adam, where are you? And the man also responded. He didn't say we. He said, I, I heard your voice. And I was afraid, and I hid it. We are now sowing fig leaf to cover ourselves. That is the divine protocol of communication in marriage. And that is also the same submission 
that Christ wanted of the church. Your submission to the leadership of the church, your submission to the priesthood, your submission to your unit leader in that order of protocol makes the church that will be glorious to run well. So these two important elements, if we want a glorious church, if we want our church to reflect the mind and the mandate of Christ, sacrifice and submission is the way out. We need to mutually respect ourselves. We will not say because we are free, we can issue instruction, we can give order, and you disrespect your members. And you disregard those people that the sheep. The, the, Peter was saying, he said, do not lord it over these people. That was the admonition of Peter to the elders and to the priests, that God has not put you to lord this over them. You are there as an overseer. And when you are saying somebody is an overseer, for crying out loud, overseer is just somebody that is standing and looking at the way things run and making sure they run well. He's not the one to go there, do everything, command there, give command there. No, you are to oversee. You are to watch over. That is the essence of being an overseer. And that is where that mutual respect of submission should come. If you are not picking anything today about the love church, the love church I'm talking about is a church that was born in sacrifice. It's a church that runs by sacrifice. The love church I'm talking about is a church that allows submission in mutual respect and even to leadership and is sustained by that same submission. So if you have accepted the lordship of Christ over your life and you have submitted your life to him, in the same way, Christ expects that submission to run through the church that he has sacrificed for. So two major elements I'm stressing here, before I go into some other short things and we wrap up, is the fact that sacrifice and submission is an important element for a glorious church, for a church to be glorious, for a church to be, to demonstrate the love of Christ that he has given himself for us, then there must be sacrifice all the way, and also there must be submission. If we look at uh, quickly Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2 says, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling sabbath. Do you hear that? He said, walk in love as Christ has loved us and had given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling table. So if I will remove the word love, I will say walk in sacrifice as Christ has sacrificed for us. If I'm going to remove it again, I will say walk in submission as Christ has submitted himself for us. The scripture said, he said, I have the right to say that my life should not be taken. That was what Christ told them when they wanted to arrest him. He said, what are you talking about? I can decide to say my life should not be taken, but I've decided to submit. I've decided to submit. The Bible said that he learned those things by giving himself as an, I mean, obedient to the death of the cross. The submission of Christ, Paul talked about that, you know, in, in, in Philippians uh, chapter two. And when he was saying, let this man be in you, as it was in Christ, in verse five, let this man be in you, which was in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But look at that verse seven. He said, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man. He unboot himself and became obedient unto Christ, unto death, even the death of the cross. So Christ himself taught us what submission is all about. You want to say Christ and death are the same? That's why the scripture started. He said, 
he did not cast Robin to be equal with God. He's, he, he's co equal, co eternal. Same God, same Father. Same, and, you, and you are saying one, one stupid death, want to kill him. But because of what he wants to do for a child that he loved, he submitted. He made himself humble. I said to married again, wife, when God says, submit to your husband. Look at the height of submission. You want to say you are the one that is financially engaged, financially empowered. You are the one doing everything. The house. I'm the one doing everything. I'm the one doing that. I'm the one doing that. You want to tell me Christ is not as much empowered. But he decided to submit to allow the church to be born, to allow the church to arrive, to allow the church to go on, that we might be called the loved church. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. If I don't say anything again, and the church can take these two elements serious and important, sacrifice and submission. I tell you what, the church will run well, the glory of the church will shine, will shine. But we have a lot of competition, a lot of contest among ourselves, a lot of ridiculing of ourselves, a lot of lack of respect. We do so many things. I see some of the time we run the church as if it's our personal business. When you are given a unit to lead, we do so many things that did not involve sacrifice and submission. We are easily irritated when somebody offends you or when the leadership even offend you, you are at the back there talking to get him out of the thing, not to, to start his leadership. So many things we do that negate sacrifice and submission. These are very serious elements that without those two S, Forget about anything glorious, church. And that is my charge to this church today. And everyone hearing my voice all over the world. The church runs by sacrifice and by submission. And it was in the same way that the church was born. Without sacrifice and submission, there will be nothing like church. It's submitted to the death of the cross. And that is why we become so loved, so loved. I, I don't know, I can't get that word out of my heart. You are, we, are, we are too loved. The church is too loved for this great height of sacrifice. So let's do the same for ourselves. The scripture says, said, by this, people shall know you if you love one another. The identity of the church is this kind of love. A love that brings sacrifice, a love that brings submission. A love that brings sacrifice, a love that brings submission. That is the identity of the church. And that is our destiny in Christ. People of God, as I tidy it up, who is a love church? A love church is a church that is sanctified. Who is a love church? Or who is the love church? Or what is the love church? A love church is a church that is cleansed. Who is the love church? Who are the love church? Love church is a church that is presented. Those are the three things the Lord draw my attention to in verse 26 and 27. He says that it's there to sanctify, it's there to cleanse, and it's there to present. Those three stages are the stages at which the church will go through. A church that is sanctified, a church that is cleansed, a church that is presented. And that is the love church. That is the glorious church. That is the love church, and that is the glorious church. So what is, does it mean by sanctification? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, he said we have been called into sanctification. And we know the process of the sacrifice of Christ is to deal with every issue of unholiness and sin that our life have bring to right from the time of Adam. He sanctified us by the truth. When he was praying in John chapter 17, he was asking God, he said, God, sanctify them by thy truth. Sanctify them by thy truth. So the truth of the word, the truth of the sacrifice that he made, the truth of the shedding of the blood brings this church sanctification. It brings this church sanctification. It made this church to be loved. People will want to wonder, with all the killing that the church has done, I, I, I'm using that now, you know, hypothetically. When I say church, I'm talking about a personality now. With all the killing this person has done, with all the evil he has done, and you just come to Christ and you submitted and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm submitting at this point. And they say your sins are forgiven. What? Can it that be that cheap? That is what the love church enjoyed because it's a sanctified church. It's a sanctified church. 
The number two thing is a cleansed church. It's cleansed in the, in, in the sense that because of uh, the lack of, let me say, let me say fullness of wholeness in terms of holiness, the lack of total purity. And that's why the scripture says, paradventure you sin. Paradventure is, he said, we have an advocate that stuck to the Father on our behalf. So the, the, the fountain of the blood of Christ still runs. It was not only used for sanctification to cleanse all our record of evil, it is also available as a fountain. The fount of Emmanuel's vein still flows to cleanse the church regularly that we might maintain our cleanliness, that we might maintain our sanctification. So the love church is a sanctified church. The love church is a cleansed church. The, the blood is available. And I'm saying to somebody, if you have gone into sin, you have gone into error, and the devil is telling you, sorry, you cannot be forgiven. Sorry, you cannot come back. You are feeling that sense of guilt. Psalm 32 says in verse 1, he said, blessed are they whose sins are forgiven. When your sins are forgiven, the scripture says you are blessed. And that is the availability of sanctification and also cleansing. But that is not a liberty for license for you to continue to sin. And that's why Apostle Paul says, shall we continue to say we want grace when we continue in sin? We cannot continue in sin and ask grace to abound. So the cleansing of the blood is paraventure. Paraventure with sin. Because of the sin nature and the flesh and the body we still carry. So the Lord thought have access to the blood for cleansing continuously. So, and the third thing God told me about this love church is that it's a church that is presented. And I love this. And that's what the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 19. He said, the earnest expectation of the world wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. I tell you, the revelation of the church is not in heaven. They don't need church in heaven. And by the time we get that, we don't need church because we are already part of eternity. We are already part of eternity. Sin will not exist any longer in our So there's no need for the cleansing sanctification any longer. The manifestation, the presentation of the church is now, is here on this side before it comes back and take us away. When it takes us away, it's coming to take a glorious church, a church that has been sanctified, a church that has been cleansed, and a church that has been presented. We must fulfill these three categories. We must be sanctified, we must be cleansed, and we must be presented. And that's why Paul said, the world is waiting for our manifestation. And that is our presentation. And so you, you read it again in context. Now you will understand what verse 26 and 27 is saying. He said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. God wants us to maintain that holiness <clears throat> without blemish until it comes back to take us. So if you have issue with any secret sin, you are privileged to be a love church because the blood of Christ is available to cleanse you. You better open up now before it is too late. Just like that, he says, just as I am, Without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and that uh, uh, I come, oh Lord, I come, I come. You know, his blood was shed, and he's bidding you to come, and then you need to come now because you are part of the love church and the privileges you have is that you are sanctified, you are cleansed and you are presented. Don't forget, I start with the two most important elements in the running of the church and that is sacrifice and submission. And that was what gave back to the church in the first place. Now the privileges of this love church is that it's a sanctified church, it's a cleansed church by the availability of the blood and it's also a presented church. I will talk more about the presentation next uh, Sunday when I'm talking about the gifted church. Don't miss that service 
and it's going to be a service of impartation. The gifted church, that's the other thing God wants me to talk about. In running up, the importance of being a love church, the importance of being part of this love church, the importance of this heritage that we have in Christ, the importance of this destiny that we have in Christ. Let me mention quickly, number one, the church that is filled with the fullness of God. This church, this love church, this body of Christ, this people called church is filled with the fullness of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 19, and I will, but I will read on verse 18 to 19 because of time. He said in verse 18, he said, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. The love of Christ so deep, so wide, so high than anything. He contains everything. He is the fullness of all things. And the scripture says that love of Christ gives us fullness of God. That is what is available for the glorious church. For, the, for you being a member and a part, you'll be missing so much if you are not part of that love church, that privileged church. So, Number one thing I mentioned in that category of that importance of the love church is the fact that this church is filled with the fullness of God. And when you are talking about the fullness of God, it includes the creativity power of God. Bible said he called things that are not as if they were. You can speak things to existence. You can command the things to be. That is the fullness of God. And that fullness is what we need even in the operation of our presentation, our manifestation that the world is waiting for. And we are still lagging behind. And this glorious church must be presented before it comes back to us. Number two thing i like to mention is the fact that all things work together for good for this church. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The scripture says in King James Version, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You hear that again? All we know that things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And that was why John was saying in his epistle, he said, we, it's not that we loved him, but he first loved us. So our, our response of love to his initial love to us make all things to work together for our good. Number three, quickly, is this love church is a conquering church. It's a conquering church. And that is what Romans chapter 8, verse 36 to 37 says. He said, as it, was, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror through him that loved us. Through the expression of his love, you gain capacity to conquer. You, it, is, it is deposited in you. You are not a weakling. You are not to quit. You are not a giveaway. There is something inside of you. He said that, the, that, that the, the, there is a treasure in the acting vessel, that the excellency of power might be of God. So something is deposited on you that gives you the capacity to conquer, to conquer every battle, war, opposition, persecution. You have that capacity because you are loved because you are a member of this love church. If you are not, please run quickly and join us in this love church. It's a privileged church. For number four, quickly say church that is full of potential. This church is full of potential to the extent that we ourselves cannot measure, we don't know the depth of that potential because it's too much. There are so many things deposited in us that we don't know. And that's why John further said in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 uh, to 2, we have sang that song, the old what manner of love. In verse 2, he says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. So the love, church, 
what he has done for us, the old work man or not that might be called this. I said, now that law has bring, brought the expression of in us being, being sons of God. He now said, and he does not yet appear what we shall be. But one thing we know, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. By the level of our understanding and comprehension, we know that we are sons of God. We know that we are heirs to the kingdom. We know we have the same privilege as Christ has. But still, we don't have the fullness of understanding of all that we have because we don't know what we're going to be. But now we are sure that whatever it is is what we are. Do you hear that? He said, we may not be able to explain it. He said, but one thing we know is that whatever it is, we are. Whatever it becomes, we become. Whatever Christ is in heaven or wherever he's sitting now, we will get here. We are. That is a serious depth of potentials that is needed kinetic energy for us to be presented and bring it forth. There are a lot of potentials in you because you are part of this love church. And that is the glorious church. That is our destiny in Christ. Lastly, I want to mention is that this church, this church, is inseparable in love. Is inseparable in love. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, verse 37 to 39, he said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. He mentioned so many terrific things. Angels, principalities, death, height, death, other creatures, what? Family, nakedness, if you are truly part of this love church, none of these things makes meaning to you. And I was like, Paul said, all I am, I count it as done for me to gain the love of Christ, for me to gain that Christ, for me to be a part of this love church, this privileged church that runs in the wheel of submission and sacrifice. So see this thing, famine, persecution, pandemic, nakedness, there is war. These are not having enough capacity to separate us from this love of God. If you truly endure to that love, and that is the love church for you. So, brethren, I'm rounding up to encourage us that you are part of a glorious thing. You are part of a very serious, very serious, glorious thing that is full of potential. That you yourself, you cannot comprehend. And that's why I was saying that Ephesians chapter 3, I read the other time, uh, verse 14 to 19. You know, in, in verse 17, uh, verse 18 that I read, he was talking about the height, the breadth, the depth of the love of Christ. We don't know it. It's too much. It's just too much. You cannot love. He loved us more than anything, and he submitted himself to die for us. So if you are not part of this love church, I'm mean, giving you an invitation as I'm closing. You may be bearing a Christian name. You may be appearing in church. Um, you may have Christian friends. Your parents may be priests, they may be bishop, whatever association you have with church or Christianity does not make you part of this loved church. No, you need to take a part of submission and sacrifice, which I mentioned earlier, for you to be part of this loved and glorious church. And that's why you submit your life to his leadership, confess your sin and repent of them, and then we welcome you to the family of God. We are taking that step. I'd love to pray for you in 30 seconds. Just say this after me. Lord Jesus, I can, on, I can see how, how great your love is. I am here to be part of that love, part of that sacrifice and submission. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. And welcome me to this body, this church that is privileged, this glorious church. Give the joy of salvation into my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray.
Lord, everyone taking that step all over the world, wherever they are listening to me, grant them the privilege to join us in this church, this glorious church, and give them the same blessing, the same privilege, the same potential in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And so everyone that's listening to me, all over, I want you to pray and say, God, help me that I will not violate the principle of this love church. Importantly, help me to be sacrificial. Help me to be submissive. Help me to be sacrificial. Help me to be submissive. Are you talking to the Lord in prayers? Help me to be sacrificial. You can unmute yourself so that I hear you praying. Help me to be submissive. Help me to be sacrificial. Lord, that this church will run well with me. That this church will run well as a member of this love church. In the name of Jesus. Pray for any cleansing. If you need any cleansing, maybe you have committed a sin and nobody knows and you want to ask God for forgiveness. Yes, it's a cleansed church. The blood is available for you to cleanse you all the time. Pray that this blood we avail for you. And pray that you'll be presented. You'll be part of the presentation of this glorious church. Open your mouth and ask him. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this glorious church. Thank you for all you did for us to be part of this love church. This glorious church is a love church. And we have seen so many in-depth of privileges and rights that we even have as a love church. Lord, we pray that we will not mess up. We will not fail you. In the name of Jesus, help us to live a sacrificial life, to live a life of submission that this church will run well. In the name of the body of Christ, will not fail by the reason of us. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every marriage listening to me that may have been having an issue with sacrifice and submission. By what we have spoken to them today, may you help them, oh God, to come together to understanding, to live in love by sacrifice and submission in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for in Jesus' unfailing name, we are praying. Amen. God bless you all. We meet again next Sunday. We are not hearing you, sir. What a word we have heard this afternoon. What a powerful word. I know the Lord has spoken to us. He has spoken to me personally. That message is recorded. And I think I will need to listen to it again and again. But I want to pray this afternoon. From that message, I ask God speaking to me that those two acts is what we need as a church of the cross to move to the best level. If we are able to submit and sacrifice, we will move this church to the best level. I don't know what God has said to you this afternoon. Whatever you are, I want to receive grace to make this truth function. Every truth of the scripture functions by the grace of God. Every truth of the word of God functions by the grace of God. When you have the truth and there is no grace behind it, the truth is invalid. But when the grace comes upon the truth, when the grace Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. Amen. Give me grace. 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 grace. is available to make the truth function. I want to pray wherever you are. Father, I receive fresh grace to let this world work in my life. Bible says they receive the Lord, and the Lord they have received profited them not because it does not meet with faith. Pray this.
this cup through whatever you want. I receive grace for this truth to profit my life. I receive the spirit of submission. I receive the spirit of obedience. I receive the spirit of sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, to be the church Christ wants me to be. It is not enough to be a member of any church. It is not enough to have your name in our room. What is enough is our submission and the sacrifice we are able to make. Many of us, we find it difficult to sacrifice just even one day to worship God, just one day. Every available hour at work, you jump at it. Every available hour, you jump at it because you can't sacrifice. God will not send you there to come here and speak to you. You have the word of God this afternoon. And somebody is hearing me. I want to tell you, tell you what the Lord do of your blessing. You want to know how family of your blessing. I don't know what manner of man you want to be, even in this city. I just want to pray, God, deliver me. Deliver me from self will. Deliver me from self drive, self love, self gratification, self fulfilling, self fulfillment. Deliver me. Deliver me. God has brought you to this land, not to seek bread. He has brought you to this land to fulfill destiny, to be what you want to be. I want to pray this man to Lord. Lord, help me. 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 The word of God will make us better. The word of God will make us better. A glorious church. That is what He wants us to be. Speak to God this afternoon. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lord, thank you for giving us your Lord. Thank you for access to revelation. God gave the world, blessed and those who publish it. Thank you for sending your servant to us. To minister to us this afternoon. Father, we thank you because we are blessed by the Lord. And Lord, we receive grace this afternoon to make the truth function in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we pray for your servant, our Father, you know your truth for us. We ask, O oh God, that you will perfect the work in his life. You will not do to anoint him on a daily basis. You will continue to empower him to fulfill your will. Amen. Continue to help him to drink daily. Amen. Amen. So, life is a nourish. Amen. Continue to make him a blessing to the church. Amen. Let us be sufficient for him. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we receive today's word by your power and your grace. It Amen. is for in the life of everyone that allows you, I want to say it again. Amen. In Jesus' glorious name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Amen.